The legal definition proving government illegitimacy. This is not legal advice and is provided for educational purposes only. This is going to cover profound revelations from the annals of law showing that all state action lacks substance, authority, and jurisdiction. Along the way, we will also hear what California says about their birth certificates, see that attorneys' primary interests and duties are to the court and prosecution and not their own clients, and the federal law that allows attorneys to lie and deceive and misrepresent us in conspiracy with the court as legal presence artificial persons. Government does not have, by their own definitions, any of the legitimacy being propagandized, believed, and so acted upon. This is found in the legal definition of the term color of law. Before we examine the definition of color of law, let's look at what color and coloring is and does. The term color has very specific legal meaning and is used in several contexts, such as colorable, color of authority, color of process, color of title, and of course, color of law. We'll be using Black's Law Dictionary 8th edition. Page 281 provides color to mean the appearance, guise, or semblance, especially the appearance of a legal claim to a right authority or office, for example, color of title and under color of state law. We see here that the definition doesn't explicitly say and an appearance doesn't implicitly mean a substantive claim to a right authority or office. In definition 2, the important aspect is, quote, turning issues from one of fact to one of law, end quote, meaning that turning issues from one of actual physical reality to one of legal fiction, and then subject to statutes and codes, of course. Coloring is the conversion of a real matter into that of a legal fiction, particularly by the act of writing it down in some document and signing the paperwork. The lack of substance is clarified by the legal definition of color of law providing the appearance or semblance without the substance of a legal right. The term usually implies a misuse of power made possible because the wrongdoer is clothed with the authority of the state. State action is synonymous with color of state law in the context of federal civil rights statutes or criminal law. But by the definition of color, it is not just the right that is lacking substance, but also the authority and office that are lacking substance as well. A misuse of power isn't required for government claims to right, authority, or office to be considered color of law. All state action is undertaken by color of law. This is affirmed by West's Encyclopedia of American Law Edition 2, providing color of law to mean the appearance of a legal right, the act of a state officer, regardless of whether or not the act is within the limits of his or her authority, is considered an act under color of law if the officer purports to be conducting him or herself in the course of official duties. Under the Civil Rights Act of 1871, Title 42 United States Code 1983, color of law is synonymous with state action, which is conduct by an officer that bears a sufficiently close nexus to a state so that the action is treated as though it is by the state. Thus, all official duties are state action and are considered color of law lacking all substance. The only substance to color of law state action is merely what we give to it through our own unsubstantiated beliefs and ignorance. Regardless of what substance we personally give their fictional appearances, all state action of government is a misuse of power due to the unlawful presumption of a legal presence through a birth certificate of title created and executed under color of title. Color of title is defined in Black's Law Dictionary as a written instrument or other evidence that appears to establish title but does not in fact do so. The birth certificate is presumed by the state to establish title to our own body, but doing so is an implementation of literal and actual human slavery outlawed by state, national, and international law. The birth certificate can only act under color of title because it securitizes our body as surety for the legal presence artificial person. And this is a false claim, that is human slavery. The state owns the legal presence and the legal presence is considered to be you, hence the state illegitimately claims title over you as a commercial financial security. Here is California Department of Health vital records affirming that birth certificates are banknote securities. California Department of Public Health vital records. Your call may be monitored for quality assurance purposes. Answers to your questions may be provided more quickly by accessing our website. Hello, this is California Department of Public Health. How may I help you? Yes, hi, how are you today? Doing great. How may I help you, sir? Yes, um, about two years ago or so, I spoke with the California Vital Records uh, with the banknote specialist over there. And uh, uh-huh. what she told me was that it, referring to the birth certificate, it would not be a banknote without the barcode. And uh-huh. is that correct? 
is correct. Uh -huh. That is correct. Uh -huh. The government acknowledges that their birth certificate of titles for us are used as banknotes, and this is under color of title to enable color of law, and is considered consent to such coloring. All government is legal fiction, fictions are not real and lack all substance. This is proven by the legal definition of the term color of law. The legal system itself is saying that it doesn't have any substance nor authority to it. The government lacks all substance to their legal right, might, authority, offices, and even jurisdiction by their own legal definitions. This is further affirmed by the legal term color of process providing the appearance of validity and sufficiency surrounding a legal proceeding that is later found to be invalid. All legal proceedings are colored by the fact that their legal service is made on a legal presence artificial person rather than upon, for, and in the physical non-legal jurisdiction of living men and women. Despite the fact that all court action is color of law and lack substance, attorneys and legal policy enforcement officers convince themselves that their authority and jurisdictions are valid because such color of process isn't later found to be invalid. But this is just a case of the legal scam not being seen as a scam by the scammers. Furthermore, the term color of authority affirms that all government is illegitimate, providing the appearance or presumption of authority sanctioning a public officer's actions. The public officer's actions are considered as though by the state and thus under color of law, hence their actions are mere appearances and presumptions of authority without substance. Not a single sheriff, attorney, magistrate, judge, justice, courtroom, or public officer of the government has legitimate substance to their actions, authority, or jurisdiction by legal definition of color and color of law. And finally, the term colorable describes what is going on. 1. A claim or action appearing to be true, valid, or right when it's not, and two, intending to deceive, counterfeit. All state action is the appearance without the substance of right authority, jurisdiction, and office. That is the deception, and all attorneys intend on this deception. Colorable is the counterfeiting of government legitimacy, authority, and jurisdiction. Despite this information being proper legalisms, the government acting under further color of law often considers it to be sovereign citizenry to know and act properly upon such academic knowledge. Nothing here has anything to do with sovereign citizens or their movement. Framing knowledge, such as color of law, which all attorneys know and act on as if it were disinformation of sovereign citizens, is the further coloring of fact with improper abusive legal labels. Why are attorneys not considered potential domestic terrorist sovereign citizens for not just believing the same thing, but getting paid out their wazoo to put it into practice, and make their legalisms compulsory and substantial while simultaneously saying those same legalisms are voluntary and lack substance out their other mouth between their butt cheeks? In my opinion, all attorneys are conspiring to commit the worst kind of fraud on many, many levels. Nothing about the legal profession is legitimate. It's all fiction designed to unlawfully control and own us as bankers' profitable collateral property through United Nations military courtrooms. As such, everything legal is not only fictional, but provably lacking substance. By law, everything legal is voluntary due to this lack of substance, and many attorneys have even told me about the voluntary nature of their legalisms. If the government cannot force us to believe in unicorns, then we cannot be required to believe and act that anything legal fictional has substance. Yet, ask any attorney how to exercise the voluntary nature of all things legal when the government acts under color of law to maliciously, lethally, and involuntarily impose those voluntary legal fictionalisms. Not a single attorney seems willing to answer how to remove oneself from their fictitious authority and insubstantial jurisdiction of all things legal, nor how to put the legal system itself on trial. It seems the attorney's only real job is to convince their clients and the public that their fictitious insubstantial legalisms have more reality to them than actual reality. Oh, and to conspire to protect each other. Even the public defender is an officer of the court upholding the court's interests above their own client's best interests, as required by the court seen here. In the Legal Encyclopedia Corpus Juris Secundum, Volume 7, Section 4, explicitly states about the attorney and client, his first duty is to the courts and the public, not to the client, and wherever the duties to his client conflict with those he owes as an officer of the court in the administration of justice, the former must yield to the latter. Not a single attorney is on our side, the side of humanity and natural rights. All they do is side with the state to spin fictions without substance in court for their own profit. 
The public is another name for the people who are represented by the prosecution in criminal cases. So all attorneys are on the side of the state and prosecution through the courts themselves against us. Furthermore, documenting that attorneys in courts are against basic morals and ethics, everyone, particularly attorneys in courts, are legally allowed to lie, as seen in the perversion known as the False Statements Accountability Act, providing Subsection A, felony charges for false, fictitious, or fraudulent statements, representations, or entries does not apply to a party to a judicial proceeding or that party's counsel. That is to say, courts, clerks, judges, magistrates, and attorneys are legally allowed to lie, conceal, trick, cheat, falsify, fictionalize, scheme, and misrepresent. Particularly misrepresent human beings as legally fictitious artificial incorporated persons in any court. This unlawfully abuses color of law to deprive us of our natural rights by law, which is against the law, 18 United States Code Section 242. Courts and attorneys have exempted themselves from their own laws. For example, the crime of misrepresenting us as and dehumanizing us into fictitious incorporated artificial persons without rights is explicitly not a crime. They are allowed to color all matters by misrepresenting real physicality as some legal fictitious matter of law counterpart that only then they have colored authority and colored jurisdiction over. Courts are authorized to lie and misrepresent us, and legal enforcement is their personal protection racket. Any sheriff that understands color of law can't perform their office due to the lack of substantial legal right authority and office except upon their fellow legal presence artificial persons. In this case, if their job depends on them not knowing something, then those officers will do everything in their power to not know it. That is why people are framed as sovereign citizens for merely knowing the law when they are not sovereign citizens. It's a psychological protection projection mechanism by police. Treating the legal systems as not having any substance is a part of legal competency. However, government lethally enforces that we act as legally incompetent in treating the government as if it had substance. They treat any self-defense against their insubstantial legalisms as a crime. They will only accept total submission to their malicious, fictitious, presumed, and yet somehow voluntary legalisms. And that is a serious natural law crime on the part of government and all their agents. Don't let attorneys color your perceptions that government policy enforcers and legal law of war courtrooms should have substance to their voluntary fiction. Only you can remove their appearance of authority by saying no and exercising the voluntary nature of all things legal. Thank you for your attention and focus. Here are some other videos that may interest you. Click to continue the transmission. Like, subscribe, notify, and share.